We're going to look at the wiring on a uh, Generation 3 uh, Pro, which comes with a green switch like this. I've, I've, I've changed uh, my switch out. I'm going to show you the internal workings of the old switch and why it broke. Uh, but if you want to look at the wiring on this, this has um, six positions, but two of them are blank. So three and six are blank. One, two, uh, four, and five are active. In the European wiring system, the white wires are the hot, and they go on uh, either the, these two sides because the neutral and the hot are switched on this. What I like to do is the gold ones are usually the hot wire so these are the uh, the four and five are gold so they're going to have the two hot wires on them and the one and two are are new or silver so they take the the blue or the neutral wires in this case and i'll just show you where these go just so that you see um the one from here is is the neutral and it's coming from the neutral uh uh cord in here so this is from the connecting block here and that goes to number one number two comes out and, the, and as i said the neutral and the hot are both switched with this switch and it goes to the um, thermal fuse right here so you can see that on the other one you have a, th a four is comes that is the hot and it comes from the connecting block down here and it goes to number four and number five comes off and goes to the pressure stat in this situation so um, this is actually yeah so the hot actually goes to the pressure stat first then goes to the element and then the, then it turns to neutral coming out of the element and it goes into the thermal fuse which is actually the neutral is fused and it goes back to switch it's interesting this has a, a little led light in it and um, it ha it actually gets its power from one of these two sides here in the middle. So it gets a neutral here and gets a hot here. So let's look on the inside of the switch. Uh, if you look at the green and blue switch, it is actually, I'm going to try to use this someday, I believe, but it has five connectors on the back of, of here. There's only one blank in the middle. So I'm trying to figure out the pin out of that, and that'll be helpful someday. And so inside here, um, I'm just if you if you can see inside here, I can't I don't know if you can see or not. There are two little rockers, and one of them is loose, and so when the switch goes back and forth, it it uh, in this position it's not connected, and then when it goes to this position, when the, the switch goes down, it connects to back to this um, spade, this um, male spade here. It's actually loose, so it's fell out. I can show you now what it looks like. It's uh, it's just a little rocker, and it goes um, connects to this part here. So that's where the power comes in and out, and then this is where uh, where the connection is made. And it has two of these rockers. The other one's actually frozen. I don't know if that's why my switch wouldn't work, but I actually can't even get it to move. So I was going to try to force it and get it to move, but I I'm not going to do that. And so that's this part that's the base of the switch the top of the switch is green as we know and we can see that right here um, and it has two little pins on the side one little pin here and it's supposed to have a pin over here if i can show you these are the two parts that broke off of my switch so my switch was at an angle and i do have some pictures of that and some videos kind of show you later if you want to see them but that's why they fit into these little Pin, the holes on each side, the pins do, it allows, as you can see in this one, I don't know if you can see those or not, that one's correct. There's a pin in there, and there's a pin in there from the green. This green's just a little different color. It's kind of interesting, but different manufacturer runs. And then it has two springs here. So that's how the power actually gets up into the LEDs. And so if I pull off these two springs... You can see the LED connections right here, these two little metal pieces here. That's where the LEDs and these springs act as the uh, conductors for the LED. So let's see if I can do one more thing here. I haven't done this yet because I was afraid that I only be able to do it once. Let's open up the inside of this switch, uh, the top part, the green part, and see what's in it. So that's just the cover, the green cover. 
And then inside here, there's a little LED. Right here, there's a little LED, and it has little pins going there, and a pin going that way, coming out of it, and those are connected to, and they're touching these little metal pieces right here that the spring actually pushes. Actually, the spring, that's kind of clever. The spring, if you can see this, pushes up, pushes these little metal things up into the uh, contact with the LED here. I may keep this part just because it's obviously functional, and if I need to ever replace the light, I could use this. And this base is obviously busted since I can't um, even move the other little rocker piece inside here, so it's going to be junk. Uh, and obviously this little green cover is junk. So the only thing that's really left salvageable out of this whole thing is the LED uh, with these little and the springs. So that's what this light looks like or how this little switch works. And uh, I've already hooked it up here and I've turned it on and off and the light comes on and my boiler heats up. I, I don't leave it on long, I'm just enough just to test it and uh, when I plug it in and so now I can put the switch back in and I'm going to be off and running. One of my future goals is to replace all these wires. I hate these spade con conductors. I hope I've got a, a little bit of an improvement. Get rid of these little plastic parts that seem to melt. Uh, use some shrink wrap on them and do some new wire. And so I'll just replace all the wiring. So uh, that's uh, that's the deal.